Welcome to American Lutheran Church in Sun City, Arizona. The season of Epiphany has begun. Today, we celebrate the baptism of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and our identity in baptism. We are glad you are worshiping with us today during this online service. We will continue with our thanksgiving of baptism. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are clothed with God's mercy and forgiveness. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. We give you thanks, O God, for in the beginning, your spirit moved over the waters, and by your word you created the world, calling forth life in which you took delight. Through the waters of the flood you delivered Noah and his family. Through the sea you led your people Israel from slavery into freedom. At the river your son was baptized by John and anointed with the Holy Spirit. By water and your word you claim us as daughters and sons, making us heirs of your promise and servants of all. We praise you for the gift of new life in Jesus Christ. Shower us with your gift and renew our lives with your forgiveness, grace, and love. To you be honor and praise through Jesus Christ our Lord in the unity of the Holy Spirit now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. Holy God, creator of light and giver of goodness, your voice moves over the waters. Immerse us in your grace and transform us by your spirit that we may follow after your son, Jesus Christ, our savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God now and forevermore. Amen. 
Today's lesson is taken from Luke's story of the Christian movement following the resurrection of Jesus. In Ephesus, Paul encounters people who had received John's baptism of repentance, but had never heard of the Holy Spirit or of baptism in the name of Jesus. After Paul baptizes them, the Holy Spirit comes upon them and empowers them with gifts of the Spirit. We read from the Acts of the Apostles, chapter 19, verse 1 through 7. While Apollos was in Corneth, Paul passed through the interior regions and came to Ephesus, where he found some disciples. He said to them, Did you receive the Holy Spirit when you became believers? And they replied, No, we have not even heard that there is a Holy Spirit. Then he said, Into what then were you baptized? And they answered, Into John's baptism. Paul said, John baptized with the baptism of repentance, telling the people to believe in the one who was to come after him, that is, in Jesus. On hearing this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. When Paul had laid his hands on them, the Holy Spirit came upon them, and they spoke in tongues and prophesied. Altogether, there were about 12 of them. This is the word of the Lord. Our psalm for today is Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord, you gods, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is a voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon skip like a calf and Mount Hermon like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak trees writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord, all are crying, glory. The Lord sits enthroned above the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as king forevermore. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O Lord, the blessings of peace. Our gospel reading today is from Mark, the first chapter, verses 4 to 11. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locust and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee, and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved with you. I am well pleased. This is the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And again, I am so glad we can worship together and celebrate the baptism of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. What is your identity in baptism? The problem often begins if we see it as a title instead of God's plan for our lives. Let's explore the baptism of Jesus 
and see how it relates to our baptism. All four of the Gospels talk about John and how Jesus asked to be baptized. Even though John had been proclaiming the gospel and baptizing those who repent of their sins and want to make right their relationship with God, John is astonished that Jesus, the sinless Son of God, is asking him to baptize him. He feels he's not worthy to do this. In Matthew 3, verse 15, Jesus answered him, Let it be so, for it is proper for us in this way to fulfill all righteousness. Jesus is baptized by John as a symbol of giving his will up to his father and the beginning of his earthly ministry at approximately 30 years of age. And it began his three-year ministry all the way to the cross. Baptism was a crucial first step in his ministry. The Holy Spirit came upon him, and when he came out of the water, he saw that we read in verse 10 and 11, and just as he was coming out of the water, the heavens torn apart and the spirit descended like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. This was a sign. This was a sign that Jesus' ministry was empowered by the spirit and would usher in peace between humankind and God. Jesus didn't need to repent or turn from sin. He was sinless. His baptism served as a sign to John and future generations of believers that he was the Messiah, the beloved Son of God. So how does this point to our identity in baptism? Baptism signifies so much in the life of Jesus and in our lives. First of all, it's an inauguration. It began the process for Jesus' ministry as a son of God, and it begins the process for us, for you and for me. Whether we were baptized as infants or later on in our life, baptism is a sign of our humble beginnings as children of the Heavenly Father. As infants, if that's when we were baptized, our parents and godparents said the vows for us. They took that seriously as they professed their faith and confessed their sins and asked God to send his Holy Spirit to inspire them to raise their child. Raise their child in the word raise their child by bringing it to church, raise their child in the way that God would have it to go. And then, as Lutherans, we were probably confirmed, most of us at the eighth grade age, and that's when we affirmed our baptismal vows and we celebrated once again that we are children of God. And I had a wonderful experience shortly after I came here to American Lutheran Church to serve as your pastor of spirituality and care. I had a friend, and I knew her mother, and I'd known her mother for a long time. I knew her mother had attended church. I didn't know that much about the details of her life, but she was such a peaceful woman. And when I started visiting her in a senior living home here in Sun City, in our conversations, when I asked her where she was baptized, she looked at me and said, I never was baptized. And our conversation continued from there. 
and tearfully, I tell you that she decided, she committed to her baptism. And so her two daughters and son-in-law and I gathered with her in the chapel as I baptized Leona. I will never forget that day. And today, as I speak, she's on her deathbed. And for that I grieve. We all grieve when that happens, but we do not grieve as though we have no hope because our hope began a long time ago, a long time ago, when we remember that Jesus went to the cross so that we could trust that we were secure for eternity. The second thing that I think our baptism is about is obedience. Just like Jesus, we are to be living as God would have us to live and follow God's calling for our lives, to follow his commandments, to pray, God, what do you want me to do today? What is your will for my life? Give me the strength to follow you. And through obedience to the word of God, we're called and equipped to lead God-pleasing lives. And the third thing I want to talk about is commitment. Commitment in our baptism. Jesus' baptism took him all the way to the cross. We are called by God's plan for you and for me to commit, to commit to share the love of Jesus Christ in the world, to share that extreme love that Jesus showed for us by giving his life, to be crucified so that he could rise again for your sins and my sins. We don't hopefully have to hang on a cross like he did. The sacrifice will not be that great for us. But I pray that we're willing to make some sacrifices in our life to follow Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Jesus' baptism started it all for you and for me, and we are to share the word of God just like we're doing as we share the gospel, as we share our prayers, as we share our thanksgiving for baptism because Jesus died and rose again so that we could be saved by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone, not through our good works. We would never earn our way into heaven. No, it's by God's grace through faith in Jesus Christ alone. May God's grace through Jesus Christ alone be our identity in baptism. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we know that Jesus' baptism account is a beautiful portrayal of the loving union of the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. This moment in his life marked the beginning of his ministry in which he was partaking in the human experience fully as the spotless Lamb of God sent to save the world. May we live our lives as your faithful servants in gratitude for your grace as your redeemed children. Empower us with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Oh
Oh God, receive these gifts as you receive us. Like a mother receives her child with arms open wide, nourish us anew in your tender care and empower us in faithful servant to tend to others with this same love through Jesus Christ, our saving grace. Amen. Guided by Christ made known to the nations, let us offer our prayers for the church, the world, and all people in need. For the church throughout the world and its leaders, that guided by the Holy Spirit, they proclaim the forgiveness of sins. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For wilderness and water, wind and wild beast, and all living things on earth, that God's goodness is revealed through creation and faithful stewards care for all God has made. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For the sick and those who provide medical care, for the imprisoned and those who show them mercy, for the lonely and those who provide companionship, for all who suffer, that God shower compassion. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. For all the beloved of God, for those seeking renewal in their lives, that we may all experience grace and peace. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. In thanksgiving for the faithful departed who now rest from their labors, that their witness inspire us in our baptismal vocations. Let us pray. Have mercy, O God. Merciful God, hear the prayers of your people, spoken or silent, for the sake of the one who dwells among us, your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior, who taught us to pray. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, on, on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give, Give us this day our daily bread, and, and forgive us our trespasses, as, as we forgive, forgive those who trespass against, against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
Let us pray for our country. Almighty God, you have given us this good land as our heritage. Make us always remember your generosity and constantly do your will. Bless our land with honest industry, truthful education, and an honorable way of life. Save us from violence, discord, and confusion, from pride and arrogance, and from every evil course of action. Make us who came from many nations with many different languages a united people. Defend our liberties and give those whom we have entrusted with the authority of government, the spirit of wisdom, that there might be justice and peace in our land. When times are prosperous, let our hearts be thankful. And in troubled times, do not let our trust in you fail. We ask all this through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. God, the Creator, strengthen you. Jesus, the Beloved, fill you. And the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, keep you in peace. Amen. Go in peace. Be the light of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>